Thanks to everyone who has subscribed. If you have not, please do. And thanks for coming out here. I really appreciate you. Why I parted ways with Tinubu PDP chieftain Femi Fanikayode explained. He said this is why he parted way with Ashiwaju Bola Tinubu. Ashiwaju Bola Tinubu, a seasoned politician in Nigeria who has been a two time governor in Lagos State. Uh, he served his first tenure from 1999 to 2007, where he had his two term in office. Ashiwaju Bola Tinubu has since assumed the role of a godfather in Edo State. This is no longer a news as politicians across the state. Those in Lagos states have kept calling him Godfather. Even very recently, the person of Desmond Eloit, whom uh, Adam Sushomole brought to Edo State to campaign for Ize Yamu, said to the people of Edo State, There is nothing wrong in what we call Godfatherism. He said, As a matter of fact, uh, Tinubu is his Godfather for the fact that he's in a Lagos State uh, House of Assembly. Is the work of uh, Tinubu, you know, you see, that was what he said. And my people, it was not a small response Nigerians gave to him saying, ah, ah, this guy, you fall your hand. Why will you speak in such a manner? You are encouraging godfatherism, knowing the demerit is more than the merit. In fact, we know what it is in Nigeria, meaning that you make one man you do know the person who is ruling from proxy and without him nothing can be done this is very shameful anyway uh the person of femi fanika is exposing to us why he parted ways with ashiwaji bola tinubu he said man you may be thinking something else but i have i know something about this guy and when i looked at the status group i said mm -mm -mm -mm. it is better at pathways and i live a good life i you know and he, and he, and that's why he said you know what at the end of the day i made a final decision let's get straight into the news and get all the details hmm. pdp chieftain chief femi fani Kayode was recently our guest on city people tv instagram live chat he spoke on a lot of issues including why he parted ways with ashiwaju bola tinubu and and spoke elaborately on some of these issues this chatter started like this. Let's talk about the lessons that you learned from your recent face-off with the Daily Trust journalist in River State. Well, I have said all I all I have to say about that and don't want to say any more about that issue. The lessons that have been learned are self evidence and anyone that needs to know should go back to the full interview. I gave why I was in Aqua Ibom. But, of course, what I will say to this, that nobody is above mistake. I made a serious mistake and I did apologize. And like I said, if out of 100 you make a mistake once or twice, perhaps two over two or three times, this, that means you are only human. Nobody is above that. But lesson on one, one must learn from that is... You must be on your guard at all times, no matter the level of irritation you get, no matter what it is, no matter how insulted you feel, you still have to maintain your cool, especially if you claim to be a leader or a political figure, one that people look up to. That was why I personal that was what I personally learned from all that. I am sure everybody must have learned one or two things about what I said, and that is is as important as that for you to apologize and you, when you get it wrong. It takes courage to do that. And of course, I do that. At any time, in any place, I make a mistake. I will say I, I am sorry and I go back to retrace my step. You are very active on social media. How do you manage your endeavor social media criticism? L uh, look, Shay. You have been in the game for many, many decades. My own, po my own position is this. If you are in position of authority or power, or if you claim you have you, you if you claim to be a leader or an influencer or one who with one with a voice that people listen to, you must be there to give them real-time information and adequately open up to speak to them with regards to how things are. 
You must let them know the true reality of the state of things and you must be able to air your voice and put in your mouth in any issues that leads to national security, development and enhancement, people's growth and total trust, reliability on government, especially on democracy. So that's why, and I take it upon myself as a duty to see to it that I keep the people who follow me intimated with all that they need to know. So what's your relationship like with Ashiwaju Bola Tinubu? Ashiwaju Bola Tinubu is someone I so much admire. Most people just have one, no idea. They don't have what, they don't know what happened in June 12th. They don't know how some of the some of the struggles these people went through about that time we were very young the contribution we made and the risk we took the fight that we fought even you particularly i remember how they were coming after you how many of these young ones know about that today they watched big brother nigeria they have no idea how passionate we carry the matter of democracy i remember that time very well it was like yesterday tinubu was a leading light in the struggle he was an exit like so many of us he and he did so much for the nadical he inspired us i was in ghana at the time we used to hear to we used we used to hear to wait for his guys talk and his guide his direction for us when i came back to nigeria he was the governor of lagos state at the time even while i was with president Olusegun, and i was very we, uh, him and i we were very close and whenever there was there were messages between tinubu and Olusegun, i will always pass the message between them some good and some not too good so we were very close and i will always say this to tinubu because i never forgot get a favor you know when i was nominated as the minister ashiwaju ordered his men and i believe it was dad at the time Alliance for Democracy, I think. Every single one of them supported my nomination. And I will never forget that. The whole of the South and the Middle Belt and the Northeast supported me. So I will never forget the role Ashiwaji Rolatine will play in directing the members of his party to support my nomination. And not only that, people he supported to rally round me, strong party members from the AD to back me up at the time. Our point of departure came many years later as it wasn't about PDP or APC. That wasn't an issue because we were still close. Our point of departure came on the issue of Buhari and the presidency of 2015. If you remember then, I was with him. I was in the newly emerging opposition group and APC has not come forward with a candidate. But I left PDP for nine months. And so when I was with him, I was with him, them, and, and not very impressed with what I saw. What I realized at the point was that the party had a religious bend and I had a northern bend. In other words, it was our it was out to promote certain objective which i am not comfortable with and i remember i told seriki and i told ashiwaju my mind i remember when we went to see olushegu obasanjo i was in the group that went to see olushegu i was in the group that went to see atiku before he joined them so i was actively involved and i and i could initially i was very encouraged because it was strong opposition but while it was emerging i realized it was a dangerous dimension i shy away from the religious politics i shy away from the ethnic politics and i came with these two together in the unit forming a political party and opposition and i wasn't prepared to be a party to at the time and i told them when i was leaving that i won't be I won't be leaving badly, but I will tell the world what the people are doing, that it was dangerous a, and it's a Muslim, Muslim ticket for the APC. I was the one who spoke about it and criticized it emphatically. And I remember Olushegun, so I believe that was our point of departure when they were insisting. And that was how the whole uh, Yemi Osibanjo issue came about. My people, there you have it. Leave us a comment. Bye for now.